In this video, I'm going to go over how to rewire the Grizzly G0715P table saw to run 110 volt, and also all the things that you need to align and adjust before running the saw. There's going to be a lot of information covered in this video, so let's get started. So to rewire for 110 volt, you're going to need a 110 volt plug and the breaker for the switch that is ordered through Grizzly. Now, here in the picture you'll see that I have the whole wiring assembly for the plug. And later you'll notice that I just went the route of just replacing the, the plug itself. Uh, clipped off the end and just added the plug instead of the whole wiring assembly. Now what you're going to want to do is take off the back of the switch. There is three screws. You just take those screws out and pop the back off. There's also uh, wire nuts in the back that hold the wires. You're going to want to loosen those up and slide those back and then the whole back should slide. Now to remove the breaker there is a nut on the outside of the switch box that you loosen up and then the breaker will slide out. And then you're just going to slip off the two black wires. But before you do, on the breaker they're marked load and work. You're going to want to make sure you take note of which wire goes to which one. Then you're going to want to put the breaker back in the box, put the nut back on there to secure it to the box, and put the back back on. Now if you're wanting to replace the whole wiring assembly for the plug, uh, you would do it even before you switch out the breaker. Um, or at the same time as switching out the breaker. When you take the breaker out and you unplug it, you're going to want to take that whole wiring assembly out, but you're going to have to have the connectors to do it. That's the whole reason I didn't go with the assembly, because that black wire has to slip back over that breaker. So I just clipped off the end of the plug, and now I'm stripping back the wires. When you go to wire up your plug or your wiring assembly, you're definitely going to want to look at the wiring diagrams that you should get with the plug. For most standard plugs, the wiring is going to go the green wire to the green screw on the plug, which is your ground. The white wire is going to go to the silver screw, which is your neutral and the black wire will go to the gold screw on the plug which is your hot. And I just want to reiterate before you wire up don't just go off my instructions look at the wiring diagram on the plug that you purchased. Okay, now let's go into switching over the motor from 220 to 110 volt. Um, on the motor, there's two jumpers. Right now, they're both in the center screws. As you see right here now in the diagram, uh, there's the one on the right shows the 220, the left shows the 110. You need to take those two jumpers and move them one on each outside. So after doing that, this is what it's going to look like. Jumpers on the right and then the jumpers on the left instead of the middle. Now when I did this there was not a lot of room in my table saw to video it but if you retract the saw all the way inside the table uh, it actually rotates that motor in a way where you have plenty of room to get this done. So now I'm going to move on to squaring and aligning the table saw up and I'm going to start with the blade itself. This is going to probably take the longest time out of everything assembly and any other alignments. Now you see here I'm setting up my dial indicator and I'm marking the saw blade where I'm going to indicate it. And then I just go from the front of the blade, then move to the back of the blade, rotating the same spot. I want to take the indicator from the same location on the saw blade. You'll see that there's quite a big difference here. And um, to adjust this blade, 
you've got to remove the back door which is just six hex screws and then in there for the two back positions there's bolts in there that you gotta loosen up and then for the two front ones I just go through the side door and loosen those up and that'll allow the whole blade assembly and trunnion and all that to rotate uh, to where you can get it squared up like I said this is gonna take the longest to get aligned because uh, it's a matter of uh, loosening it up, adjusting it, um, minor minor adjustments, and then indicating to see where we're at, loosening it back up, adjusting it, tightening it back up, and back and forth like that. Uh, this process right here, just to get the saw blade aligned, took me about an hour and a half to two hours. And then once you have everything aligned and everything's tightened back up, just put the pl back plate back on and everything is set. Now in my table saw assembly video, I had already uh, leveled out and aligned the rails for the fence system. And all I did was take a level and level the angle iron to the table saw and then place the tubing on it. So here you'll see that I'm adding the tape measure to the tubing and all I did was I set the fence one inch from the saw blade and then I laid my tape measure down on the tubing, uh, set out one inch on the indicator for the fence. Then I taped everything down so it wouldn't move. I trimmed off the end of it that hung over and then I peeled back the sticky back and placed the tape on the tubing. So now we're going to dial in this tape measure to where the measurement is spot on. So what I did was I set the fence to a specific measurement. I cut the piece of wood and then I measured that with my calipers. So if your measurement indicator is a little bit off, you're just gonna loosen up the two screws on the indicator. Adjust the indicator accordingly. Tighten them back up. And then you're going to repeat the process. You're going to cut another piece of wood, measure it with your calipers, and compare it to your indicator until you have this thing completely dialed in. Here we're going to adjust the table saw plate with these screws right here. These are just the adjusting screws and all you want to do is make sure that the plate is flush with the table saw and it doesn't have wobble. Um, on the front side of the plate you do not want it sticking above and on the back side you definitely do not want it sticking below because your material will catch on the table saw or that plate. Here you see I have a little bit of wobble so now I'm just trying to get everything adjusted to where it stays flush and I get rid of that wobble. Here I'm just checking the wings making sure everything's flush. Um, mine ended up being flush but they said if it is off that you can add tape on the top or bottom side. Uh, where the wing bolts up and it'll make that slight adjustment to where everything's flush. And then here I'm just using some croil to clean off all the oil that they had on the top. Getting all the dirt and grime and everything off of that. 
and it will also help the cast iron top from rusting. So I just apply the wax, I let it dry for a minute, and then I go and buff it out with a clean rag. And I got the top and I wanted to make sure to get the miter slots and the plate and everything. And then you want to remove a lot of this grease that the manufacturer puts on to prevent rust. Uh, you don't have to get it completely off, spick and span clean, uh, just the majority of it so that when you're running your table saw, it's not catching all that sawdust. After all that, your table saw is ready to rock and roll. I've been cutting on this thing and I absolutely love it going from my contractor saw, my craftsman contractor saw, to this has been absolutely amazing. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, stay safe.